Welcome to the Between Two Wheels podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny Roblox, and you all know my co-host, Justin, not the FXDR bird, and Uncle Comment Mafia Ken. This episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your one-stop shop for all things Harley and Harley-related, Nutsack, the last EDC bag you will ever want or need, and Brush Hero, the ultimate detail brush. Today, we are talking about Battle of the Kings, who we think will win, and who should not oh, I fucked that up ah, he hey, finally fucked it up <laughs> <laughs> who we think will win and who should not quit their day jobs that Was, might or might not have been sabotaged by me how <laughs> 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 like, should, should not yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's going on um, I, I'm, I got to ride today yeah yeah finally I, I did this not. weather's fucking stupid it was like <sighs> thunderstorms for the next 13 days and then it didn't rain at all so i saw sun today and i was like fuck it i'm going out <laughs> so put the fat bob through its paces my bike's all ready good to go Eight, ready for eighteen hundred dollars uh, worth of ready that's what an oil change in new tires that right? was the 20 <laughs> that was a 20k which actually covers a lot of stuff in the 20k yeah it's more than just an oil change it, it was this time definitely <laughs> tires brakes and had to get a hand control module okay hand job module yeah hand job module is that that thing that looks like a flashlight with the lips in it no. faith has lips <laughs> <laughs> is that what you named it <laughs> <laughs> so for our listeners who do not follow us on instagram you suck we celebrated <laughs> our twenty five thousand thousand download milestone this week oh, hold on keep talking that up keep and that up. we decided to do a giveaway and we are all big fans of i'm celebrating there we go oh, thank you sound effects <laughs> yeah. so we are all rogue rider industry fans and hell yes and the, oh, the owner of the company shirt. is super cool, and he told us, hey, let's partner up to do a giveaway. So we put out a giveaway, what, Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday. I think so. Yeah, yeah. it was Tuesday um, the 14th or something like that. Carry the 7. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> minus this and that. And so we said, hey, all you had to do was comment, li- you know, become following members or whatever of both of our pages, Instagram stuff. And tag a friend. You you made that sound really God hard. Dale. Yeah. <laughs> I was expecting wow. to say the Instagrams. <laughs> the Instagrams. The, the Instagrams. <laughs> Anyways. Become the follower to, of the pages. You go to the www. <laughs> Carry the pudding pop. <laughs> Anyways, we, <laughs> you know, we record our episodes uh, two weeks in advance. And this episode, we are announcing the winner so we had to kill it on a Friday today as we record. And the winner of a full set of Rogue Rider Industries SIGs is at Worms underscore Dina. Worms Dina. Worms Dina. He's got a dog on his Instagram yeah. page. Apparently its name is Zeke. Zeke the dog. Yeah. Cool. He, he's adorable and he's perfect and I love him. So at Worms Dina, if you're listening, we will be contacting you directly on the Instagram and uh, getting your contact information so we can send out the set of SIGs. Yeah, and, uh, which are turn signal inserts in case you don't know what they are. Yeah, so, you know, we'd, we'd definitely like to, to see those installed. But more importantly, you know, you could send us a picture of your dog or any dogs for that matter. Or put them on your bike and then put the dog next to the bike showing the SIGs. Yes. There you go. I'll share that on my page. Okay, there you go. All right, so... Battle of the Kings. It's the final battle. Tell us about Battle of the Kings, Justin. So the Battle of the Kings is essentially a bike competition between Harley dealerships that pair with a local um, like trade school or something like that. So I'll go ahead and read what they have on their website. Okay. With over 100 unique custom creations, Harley-Davidson dealers from around the world create one-of-a-kind custom bikes and compete head-to-head to to battle up for the title of world champion. The challenge is to partner with local trade school students from across the country, take a standard Harley-Davidson model, and turn it into something unique. Over 40 dealers from across the nation compete 
to create a custom model in either dirt, track, or chop using Harley-Davidson parts and accessories with a budget no bigger than half the cost of the original model. Who decides the winner of the Battle of the Kings? The public. This is a public vote to find America's favorite custom bike. More on that later. The journey doesn't stop there. The winners of the public vote, the People's Choice winners, will go on to compete in front of a panel of Harley-Davidson judges, narrowing it down to three category winners. These top bikes will then be voted on by Harley-Davidson dealers during this year's annual meeting in Milwaukee. The U.S. Custom King Champion will be crowned and travel to Italy to compete for the World Champion Crown. The final is held at EICMA as a panel of experts then pick the world champion of Battle of the Kings. So essentially what we did here at Between Two Wheels is each of us picked our top three as well as our bottom three, correct? Yeah. Bottom three? Okay. And to be clear, this was just the American entries. The reason we did that is because if we would have expanded it to worldwide, there would have wow. been a whole lot of bikes we had to look a whole, at. A whole lot of <laughs> yeah. bikes. So we picked our top three and our bottom three, and then we also picked a couple of international uh, honorable mentions. So some of the ones that we thought were pretty badass that mm-hmm. were from overseas or out of country. So. so I missed that part where it said the total cost of the build couldn't be any more than half of the bike. It kind of changes it. So that really changes yeah. it. I I'd, 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 I would have made my picks well, differently. Maybe you should read. I did. Just not, not well. Not all the words. <laughs> Some of the words. Some of the words. And most, most of the, the battle. So <laughs> it was funny because going back to what we just talked about, the giveaway, one of the, the thing was is you had to tag a friend and then tell us what bike you had in the comments. Well, I shared the post on my Instagram at bike underscore bike what? underscore <laughs> in underscore bird. There you go. You should follow me. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting close to 10,000, so please follow me. Because uh, once you pass 10,000, you can put links. So I can actually link oh. between two wheels with the two spelled out TWO. Anyways, right. I shared on my page, and my first my first line was "must enter on between two wheels" page in <laughs> yeah. all capitals, and I had like three or four people like it, like put you know tag a friend and comment. Yep. So I was like, "Why are you telling me what kind of bike you ride?" And this one guy was like, "Because I can't read." Apparently, I was like, "No, you can read. You just can't read the first <laughs> line in all caps because <laughs> you knew what the directions Did were." You read all of it. <laughs> All right, so... Anyways, on to our picks. Yeah. <laughs> so we're starting off bottom to top. So we'll say our who who we thought is going to get third, who we think is going to get second, who okay. we thought was the actual winner. And then we'll go... Th- so these are our favorite bikes. Our top picks. Correct. Okay, cool. All right, so Justin, go ahead and go first. So I originally thought this was going to be my number one just because it was one of the only ones I had seen. Mm-hmm. Um, but... It did get beat out, but it did stay in the top three, and that's going to be the FX GTS Coast Glide. Uh, it's actually a sport glide made by Laidlaw's Harley Davidson. Shout out on YouTube uh, with UTI slash MMI, uh, which is, in case you don't know what that is, it's basically mechanic school. Uh, this bike is pretty badass. What do you guys think? Yeah, I liked it. I, I really enjoy it. Yeah. I think it's what yeah. the sport glide should have been. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Color matched hard bags with yeah, a fair. I'm, I'm telling you, that's where Harley hurt themselves. Was those it, bags? Those bags, man. Yep. Just color match them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's, that's all it's, I want. It's that faux leather, isn't uh, it? Yeah. From the yeah. factory? Yeah. It's just yeah. plastic. The, w- the thing I like the most about the Coast Glide, mm-hmm. I, I actually hated the paint. I really did. Really? Um, but that's what the FXR should have been. Okay. That's um, fair. And they went... The FXR fairing that they put on there. FXRT. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's a throwback to the police fairing, mm-hmm. which I thought was a badass fairing. Yeah. I mean, now, we all know I'm not a Dyna guy, but I can respect that bike. Yeah. Um, well, why are you saying that? Because the FXR was neither a Dyna and neither is this. Are you just throwing that out there because yeah. you want everyone to know you hate Dynas? Okay, yeah. cool. Just, just making sure. <laughs> um, I actually really liked the paint. I felt like it was attention grabbing enough to be interesting but it wasn't over the top the the highlighter orange was a little loud but i thought it was still cool i think the wheels could have done a little two-tone just to kind of break it up other than that i think it's an awesome build it's definitely a west coast bike oh for sure but i mean that's i think that's what they were going for obviously um so 
for all of our listeners, if you go to our website, www.betweentwowheels.com, the two is spelled out T-W-O, and go to the show notes for this episode, we have links to all of these bikes in the show notes. And you're also going to put them on the YouTube channel, right? Yeah. Right. I'm going gonna, gonna to put the entire oh, okay, show notes okay. on there. I, I was hoping that. So you're going to put the show notes, or you're going to pop up the picture when I say this, like pop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're going to put it right here? Yeah. yeah. You're put Do it right that here. right there. Okay. Yeah. I can. Mm-hmm. All right. I yep. just want to make sure I give as, you as much work as possible. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll go next. So my third best pick is the Alka Hauler. And it's a fat bob with a sidecar made from a keg, like a big ass wine keg or a bourbon keg, if you will. And I just, I loved it. It's made by uh, Rock City Harley Davidson with the University of Arkansas Pulaski Technical College. Arkansas. So, but a keg sidecar. The paint job. It's really good. Was phenomenal. Well, yeah. it's, it's not paint. It's not paint? No. No, oh, I didn't see that. I, I didn't if, see that either. If I'm, if I'm correct, it is a flamed, not flamed, torched metal. So literally they, they take bare metal and then they take a blowtorch mm-hmm. and get close and that causes patinaing and the changing color. And oh. I'm sure they clear coated it. Yeah. But but yeah, it's not it's not paint as far as oh I can tell. Oh my god. Did you see the picture with the dog in it? Oh yeah. I never saw that. Now would have got number one. Uh and oh, then, okay, I see it. Yeah. It has that almost yeah. like that you zoom in you can really yeah. tell. It yeah. looks like an old um, what do you call it? The thing that makes the alcohol. The still. The yeah. still. Yeah. yeah. That's so, pretty dope. I yeah. Like so that was that took third for me. And that was a fat bomb. God damn. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm I'm questioning the whole budget thing. <laughs> Cuz see trucks or uh, sidecars are not cheap, especially a 100% custom one-off sidecar like and that. And that's and that's what I was curious about when it comes to stuff like paint is because like if you have a student paint it or if someone at the shop knows how to paint, you're not if do you you're have to charge labor. them for the labor? I mean, no, if somebody no, has you're a, only a paying, free barrel. Well, th- I, I'm betting this budget is for the parts and accessories only. Okay. Yeah. So the the paint work, they would only have to pay for maybe the materials. The materials, yeah. But none of the labor costs. Yeah, I'd like to get someone in here that actually knows what the fuck they're talking about when we come some to this. Some of these bikes. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. there's some, like what, some of the ones we're about to talk about, I was like, how the fuck did they get this in X amount of dollars? <laughs> All right, Ken, let's, let's hear your number three so my number three pick was the joker it's a street bob and it was done by green mountain harley davidson with the northwest technical center and it's just just looking at it it's got a a, just a beautiful candy red frame Mm -hmm. and the rest is black it's an old school like chopper by and i mean they bobbed the fender. Well, there's no fender on the front. They bobbed the rear fender. It's just so clean. And then if you look at the pictures, they have a jockey shifter on it. Yep. Which I think that was great. I think those are great. Mm-hmm. Or suicide shifter, whatever you want to call them. They took the, uh, I didn't notice this, they took the gauge and planted it in the tank. That's the speedometer oh, and I stuff mean, like oh, that. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. That's the thing that clamps onto the bars. Mm. That's pretty cool. And yeah, like, that's... I mean, that paint job right there is worth quite a bit of money. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's that classic chopper look mm-hmm. on, on a, a modern bike. On a modern bike, and I really just, it just stood out to me. Okay. So let's move on to second place. Number two. Uh, Ken, let's go ahead and have you continue it on. All right, so I picked this one before I realized who it was. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, well, you sent you, you. We had mentioned we were gonna do this, and I was like, "Oh, well, look, guess where I'm at." So this is the OG FXBB by Cowboys Alamo City Harley Davidson here in San Antonio. Here in San Antonio. Yep. It's a street bob. This is the one that the guy was trying to tell me was a Sportster. Remember how I told you guys that I almost fucked the dude up? Oh. When we were buying Brad's bike, this guy <laughs> in fucking sandals was trying to tell me this was a Sportster. Mm, no. It's not. It's not. I've seen <laughs> these verses. He's like, I touched like, it got, even. He's like, it's got a Sportster tank. I was like, there's no Sportsters with a Milwaukee 8. He's like, that's not Milwaukee 8. I was like, I'm, it, I'm it fucking It says done. right on there. <laughs> it says right on there still. The original engine still has I'm Milwaukee, fucking, whatever. Yeah. Hank was like, he was trying to tell you you didn't know what you're talking about. I was like, <laughs> so, no, I just, there was, this one just, the the paint on it, uh, as the I'm paint usually, is the best part. Yeah, the paint is the best part, definitely. I'm usually not a fan of the the fishtail pipes, but it fits. 
with them being this is the one that has the upswept pipes correct yeah so yeah. yeah i can actually handle it with that yeah but when they put all these touring bikes that have the dual fishtails coming out and like four feet With, behind yeah. the... I love it. I, oh I hate God. those I things. I love that. Because all I can think of is somebody's just going to walk by and just step on those fuckers. Yeah. But no. So yeah, the, one of the reasons that, that I picked it, you know, it, it, it's got a classic look to it, kind of like the Joker did, you know, that classic mm-hmm. chopper look, but the, the paint is phenomenal. The attention to detail, because I actually got to see it in person. Mm-hmm. The attention to detail is, is all there. Hey, and, you know, they happen to be a local... Yeah. Local dealership. So, for my second place, I went with the old heavy. The old heavy. It's a fat boy made by Kirstings Cycle Center with Skill Center. This was one of my favorites as well. So, I like the fat boy models. I thought they hardly really screwed them up uh, over the last couple of years. But these guys took it to yep. a next step, a, n- a next level. It's they, what the fat boy should have been. Yes, I like they, they did a before and after. Yeah, I like the that wrap front fender on there. The Man. chopped rear fender just looks gorgeous. And then that paint detail. Oh, I know. Yeah, the ghost in stupid. And the uh, the engine coloring accents mm-hmm. works so well. Mm-hmm. And what's cool is these are all Harley Davidson parts that you can go and buy if you wanted to buy Harley Davidson aftermarket parts. But the headlight cover, you see in that? Something about it I just really like. I mean, that headlight looks good. It's yeah. just the way that they put it in the bike and the way it's colored from yeah. the factory doesn't work. But I like how they... It, is it flat from what I can... It it's looks, either a flat or like a semi-gloss, but it looks yeah. really fucking good. Yeah. That whole bike is look, looks so good. Yeah, that's the fat boy I would go out and buy. Absolutely. Yep. That, hands down, I would do that it. That bike would sell like fucking hotcakes, especially yeah. in this area. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of people dislike the fat boy because of that front wheel. The disc. Oh, oh yeah. I love it. I think it's cool. I think yeah. you can make it work. Uh, maybe. I mean, you know... Maybe if you powder coated it. So it used to be. Yeah, it's not pretty from the factory, but no. you could make it work. Like 2004 Fat Boys, it was both front and rear mm-hmm. were solid. And when I was living in Bahrain, they have this huge bridge that goes pretty high up in the air so that oil tankers and, and U.S. Navy ships can go through. And when you're up there and that wind's blowing. Yep. You have to lean <laughs> way the fuck over because the wind will push those those rims and push you onto the other side. So I've heard that from a lot of people. And I, I, I don't know. Rims are something that you can change pretty easily, and those are not super unique sizes. So, you know, you could go aftermarket or even with Harley and get some decent spoked yeah. uh, mags or something. Don't go with spoked wheels, but get some spoked mags or something. Yeah, like a five-star yeah. or something yeah. like that. Yeah. All right, Justin, what is your number two? My number two is, I believe it was the only Sportster to make it on the top nine, I guess you could say, is the Portland Flyer. Uh, this was made by Paradise Harley-Davidson with Tigard High School, Tigard High School. Mm. Uh, this thing just literally, if, if you don't know what you're looking at, this bike looks to be close to 100 years old yeah because it it looks like a old 1920s 1930s bike that has been remade and just came out of a, of a museum mm. so just some interesting facts for people that don't know what they're looking at uh the frame is color matched so that right there is a shit ton of work i mean my frame is color matched well <laughs> <laughs> when you have an all it's black not bike. black <laughs> <laughs> it's got custom made or at least I don't know if they're custom, but it has rear sets, which is not something you see on a lot of Harleys. Um, the tank, I don't know if they custom made the tank or if that's actually something off of an older bike. Because, uh, I mean, it fits the style just spot on. And it just, it looks fucking awesome. It, it literally looks like the bike is 100 years old, but it's on a brand new Sportster. And to kind of fo- talk what we were talking about earlier is they have the smallest budget. Wait, oh, it's a Sportster. It's yeah. Iron 1200, yeah. Iron 1200. That bike is what, 9,000? 
Some, yeah, close. Nine, ten. So, I mean, they had five grand max to do all that work. Yeah, yeah they put this was the, the, the rear sets, you know, it's in the race respect. category. Yep. So, that makes sense. It's yeah. like the old flat track Harley yes. race bikes, is what it's, it looks like. Yeah. yeah. If you watched Harley and the Davidsons, that's, this is what that bike looks like. Yep. <laughs> All right, so Justin, go ahead and take us into our favorites. Ooh, okay. So, so this is our first best pick, or what we think is our the best bike. My number one pick, the person or the bike that I think should win, is the SR93. This bike started off as a fat bob and was built by Buddy Stubbs, Arizona Harley Davidson, with MMI. Uh, MMI has a couple different institutes, mm-hmm. so in case anyone's wondering, they didn't work with the same dealer but uh, or the same school, but there's just multiple campuses. This thing looks like it could haul some fucking ass. <laughs> <laughs> First off, the paint is awesome, so you kind of have to get the right angle to really appreciate it, like kind of the, the top view to get like the, like the American flag kind of going down the center. You also get to see that the tank has been completely swapped out. Uh, it's a custom swing arm. So if you look at the swing arm, that's mm-hmm. not stock at all. It's chain conversion. It has race wheels and tires. Um, let's see what else. Uh, some custom fabricating on the seat and fender. That whole rear fender looks like one single piece. And to top it all off, they just threw a road glide fairing on it because why the fuck not, right? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks just so fucking cool. And the frame is painted too. So Yeah. I like <laughs> they put slicks on it. Yes. Yeah, so granted, these guys had a little bit more money to work with. Uh, if it started off at one fourteen, they were probably working around nine, ten thousand dollars. But that's still a shit ton of work. That swing arm alone probably set them back quite Unless a bit. Unless they custom fabbed it themselves. Doubt it, but it's possible. Yeah. So for my first pick, I went with the Hard Eight. It's a street bob by Yellowstone Harley Davidson with Emerge School. This is one of my favorites as well. This thing, everything, frame pan to match the bike, super unique paint scheme, the rear fender mount setup, just everything is awesome. The colorway on it is perfect. I mean, it's, and I don't know why they called it hard eight. I don't see dice anywhere or anything like that, but it's still just an amazing looking motorcycle. So, so I like what, the color that they went with on the engine. That's yeah. so cool. But the rest of it. You don't like the green? No, the green and the orange is great on the engine. The, yeah. the, but the the rest of the paint and the frame, standing back looking at it, it looks flesh colored. Mm-hmm. And that just really kind of put me off. I yeah. thought it looked almost like from far away, it almost looks like it's made out of wood. Yeah. But. Uh, I could see that, yeah. It's and, clearly, once you get up close, it's clearly a military themed type bike. Yeah. Which is hard to do well. Yeah. And, and I think it's they usually overdone. It. It's usually very overdone. But these guys, they put the, the classic graphics on the tank. They did like a patina rust around mm-hmm. the edges. It yep. looks fucking great. Chain conversion. Hold on. <laughs> no, they I thought those were 50 cows on the wheels. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but they're not. They just look similar. So, Ken, what is yours? So, so my, my top pick was the, uh, the alcoholer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I thought, man, just... Sidecars are just so awesome. Yeah. They're hard to do well. Especially yeah. when you put a dog in them. And then, well, that's you know. That's the only reason to have a sidecar is for puppies. Yep, I agreed. Oh, yeah. I mean, the the the, the torched paint job mm-hmm. is really, when I was looking at all these bikes, that's what really caught my eye was that torched paint job. Mm. Uh, because, I mean, yeah, you can cut, you can fuck it up, but it's really just kind of how the metal reacts to your to your heat that you're applying yeah. and how much heat you apply to that spot. Uh, and then one of the pictures had a dog in it. So, I mean, that really just sold it for me. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. So these are our top three favorites from the American manufacturers or uh, dealerships. So next we're going to be talking about the worst three. Now let's be fair. To be fair. To be fair. God damn it. You guys need to fucking stop. (laughs) <laughs> no. <laughs> these these bottom bikes are still good bikes. Oh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. They're just I not mean, our taste. Not the 
best. But right, so, I was gonna say, are we? We were not gonna rip into these because I'm <laughs> down. I'm absolutely ripping. Oh no, no, I totally did. Okay. No, 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 totally. But before we get to those, are let's... we giving like everyone a ribbon? Is this like that fucking everyone gets a <laughs> no, gold no, star? you don't get a participation medal in this okay. in this series here. Hold on, can I can I tease this one? Yeah. When we come back, we'll tell you about all these shit bikes that we didn't like right after this short message from Nutsack. <laughs> Nutsack is the only EDC bag the crew carries, and for good reason. They're crazy and awesome. They get their name because folks said they had to be nuts to manufacture a man bag in America with American waxed canvas, American leather, and American labor. We want you to join us in the two-week challenge. Buy a bag from them, use it for two weeks, and if it doesn't completely change the way you carry your everyday gear, they will give you a full refund. We absolutely love ours from carrying a around extra mags for our concealed carry to earbuds sunglasses vape stuff and business cards it is great having less shit in our pockets and it was because of the nutsack satchels that we were able to be less weighed down if you buy using our link nutsack will give you five dollars off to enjoy a beer head over to nutsack.com slash b2w that's n-u-t-s-a-c dot com slash be the number two w to get yours today all right we are back and if y'all didn't notice that is our newest sponsor nutsack our favorite edc bag so be sure to go check them out now <laughs> i'm going to start off on our worst three yeah um, set the tone here yeah <laughs> third worst <laughs> And I'm going to catch so much shit for this one. The FLTRXR. So this, by the way, we're seeing each other's picks as you guys are hearing them. So you're <laughs> going to get to hear all our reactions. <laughs> How the fuck did you put this on the bottom? I, really? I did not like it. I really liked this one. He, so He's a fucking commie. That's what it is. No. Okay. So it's a road glide from Yankee Harley Davidson with Bristol Technical Education Center. So why is it in the bottom for me? The paint is just too much. Ugh. The the windshield is ridiculous. It's supposed to be in the race category, but that windshield does absolutely nothing. It should go with the clockworks, but and the swing arms on touring models are fucking ugly. And then the way they painted it just exacerbated that ugliness even more. <laughs> I really liked the paint on this one. I did too. So the reason I, I, I didn't gave put them in my props, I gave them props because it, the frame's painted. Yeah. And anytime you're stripping down a touring model to paint the frame, I give you props for that. But I would not be caught dead riding this motorcycle. Oh man. What if it was free? No. Oh fuck! I'd ride it. I'd ride the shit out of it. Anybody want to send me a free motorcycle? I'll I'd ride get it. a white leather race suit and put some <laughs> red, white, and blue tassels on it. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> I'd I'd be driving along and two bald eagles just come and land on my shoulder, start having sex, making little bald eagle babies. Yeah, and ah. fart and fire. Mm. All right. The only thing I didn't like about it was the battery cover. Mm. I didn't like how that's just like a a triangle. The one that actually Steve Chamberlain fifty one fifty S Chamberlain fifty one fifty on Instagram, his looks way better than this. It's a lot. It's like kind of set in. It, it kind of minimizes that whole area as opposed to fifty one fifty is a paint company primarily, right? Or a, a full custom fab? No fucking clue. I just know it's his username on Instagram. Uh, well, there's a company <laughs> called 5150 that does amazing paint work. So that might be the same guy. Anyways, Justin, what is your worst three? Uh, the skid mark. The skid mark. <laughs> it is an Iron 1200 made by Black Magic Harley Davidson with Wilston High School. The reason I picked it at the bottom is it... Mm, it just looks like a paint and parts bike gone wrong. It's it it, <laughs> it looks like a little Yamaha. It looks like a tiny ass bike, don't it? It, it, it literally <laughs> looks like the Honda Cub, <laughs> but well, that worse. is like five feet of snow in the background. Yeah, but go to go to the next one with with people in the picture. It's yeah. it's a decent sized bike. It just I just yeah. don't think it looks good. The yeah. concept there was was cool. What, what, what's with going the on in the tank there? In that picture. Is that a reflection? That's a reflection. It's a reflection. So that tank is just a regular clamshell tank that you can get with that section cut off. So that was not done by them. That's a bot tank. That's a bot side cover. That's a bot um, rear fender. It's a bot seat. The The front fender looks either chopped or stock. There's not much done to it. The um, 
the the hand guards are like three sizes too big for the bike. They're the looks, looks like the Aturbies. or they look sad. It, it's they like just droop. yeah. <laughs> and then the exhaust is just fucking hideous. And also, I the stance of this bike looks weird to me. It looks like it's kind of sitting back, which it shouldn't be, especially for an off road, yeah, styled bike. Because you want to be more into the center of your bike, right? Well, that. I mean, so so yeah, there's that, but I mean, either lower the front or raise the rear. You you can't have you mm. know that backwards lean. That's just not gonna work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So I hate being mean to people's bikes, but well, fuck. It is well, it's it a is. competition. Yeah. I mean, it voted is. on by the public, and, and, and last I checked, I was the public. And to be f- and to be fair. To be, be fair. fair. This was done with a high school, so these guys probably don't have, one, the most experience, mm-hmm. and two, they're looking at it through completely different lenses than oh, most yeah. people. So, yeah. like, people no, in their generation might think that's fucking awesome. It's, it's not a terrible bike. It's just, it's not king-worthy. I agree. Yep. There's a I mean, lot more talented look, builders the, and bikes the people in this that, competition. people that worked on these bikes, they, they put in work. I mean, yeah. I'll give them that. You know, I think, but not everyone can win. Kind of sidetracking here, I think that this Battle of the Kings competition might be one of the harder bike competitions because you've got such a small, you know, focus. Oh, your, your budget, your budget is so tiny. It's not like you go to the, you know, IMS where you've got fucking hundred thousand dollar baggers competing against sportsters. Everyone has the opportunity to start on an even slate. Well, so yeah, it really not, goes and down not to, everyone's a custom fabricator. Yeah. You know, not all these people have CNC machines and can Correct. TIG weld and all that stuff. Yeah, so. Yeah. All right. So, Ken, what is your number three? So, uh, picking a terrible bike was... It was a lot harder than I thought it, it was going to be. Yes. Mm-hmm. But but this one was kind of an easy pick for me. The, the Cornfield Crusher by Brant's I-69 Harley-Davidson with Marion Regional Career Center. Uh... Tell me that's not just a stock bike with custom exhaust. So you it's funny because this bike almost made it in my top three just because it's a fat bow and I think it's kind of cool. But I, I I took it off my top three for that exact reason because really all that's done to it is a stage one, some color on the motor, and they swapped out the wheels and the front headlight for a number plate yeah. and the exhaust. It's, I mean, it's they didn't super paint basic. It. Nope, that's a stock color. Yeah, it's stock paint, stock graphics. And those, those the, are the new Milwaukee. What are the insert things. inserts? Yeah, yeah. The, the Dominion or Domination, yeah. whatever it's called. Yeah, it's it's super. It's, it's, it looks good. I like the exhaust. I think it looks awesome, but to the point we just brought up, not worthy of the Kings. Yep, I agree. I feel like they didn't try. That's it. Literally looks like they're like, oh <laughs> shoot, we're supposed to enter that tomorrow. Fuck, what do we have laying around the shop? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Those so, welds, those welds were probably all fucked up. That's when they wrapped it. <laughs> <laughs> probably wasn't even welded. Let's move on to the second worst. Uh, I'll go first on this one. The Fury. The Fury. The Fury. Oh God, this almost made it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Wait, did I pick that as my number one? <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, but this was one of my bottom contenders for sure. The paint <sighs> job on this bike really hurt my eyes. It makes me angry. Um, the chin spoiler it doesn't match it it doesn't work it doesn't flow with the bike at all and uh, did they do anything else to the bike it looks uh, like they threw some paint on there i don't think those bars are stock is that gas tank a stock because it, it looks uh, cool i like that little the uh, scallops on scallop the on i don't it. think the, i don't think the scallops are but wow it is for me looking at it that hurts my eyes. It is not a pretty bike. <laughs> so. that, I think, and I think it has to do with their paint. Yeah. So it's, this, I do like that thing they put above the headlight, though. Yeah. Instead of the regular one, or just not having anything. So the Fury is a Harley Davidson breakout from Brian's Harley Davidsons with Bucks County Technical High School. Bucks County Technical High School. So it, even though it has a incredibly loud, obnoxious paint job, it still looks very plain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for me, I I couldn't do it. And a, and a two and a one exhaust. It's like that just does not fit the style. Mm-mm. No, not at all. It reminds me of freaking uh, it's, uh, shit. The Batman Joker's girlfriend. Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn. Why? The the red and black kind of. It's orange. That's orange, dude. It looks red to me. You colorblind fuck. Maybe so. <laughs> yeah, that's like a Sedona orange. Well, you don't have to freaking. See, okay, see, it's red in that picture to me. 
the, that top one and it looks red-ish, but it it's pretty fucking. <laughs> Is orange. it like a pearlescence in there or something? I don't know. It might be honestly. All right, colorblind Ken, let's have you go next. <laughs> colorblind Ken, all right. <laughs> so I picked cashmere. With cashmere. A, with a K, cashmere. Coming to the stage. Oh, yeah. yeah. I fucking hated this one, too. Super yep. boring. Cashmere, Z&M Harley-Davidson with Rosedale Technical College. It's a road glide special in the chop category. There's <laughs> nothing fucking chop. I was saying, how is this in the chop about category? About this bike. Yeah, it looks like they added the... It looks like one of my builds. <laughs> looks like they just added some bolt-ons. <laughs> I mean, th- looking at this bike, it has a custom paint job. Paint? Uh, bars? Yeah. Yeah. And but, you know, they... they but here's a, it's a Rogue Glide uh, special, so they added the lower fairings to it. Yeah. <laughs> With the speakers. But, yeah, they added the custom... Uh, Speaker lids. And, you know, they got custom paint mm. with, you know. And they did the speakers in the, uh, the lower fairings, they did. didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. The, so it the is. The fake CVO motor color like I did. Yeah. Like yeah. Exactly like I did. <laughs> so what's what's funny is I think. Yeah. you. Oh, shit. This is on That my was your number one. one. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's, it's, just a fucking, it's just a fucking basic bagger with some paint. So boring. Yeah. You know, they, they uh. put fucking lowers on it. Whoop do you fucking do? Dude, this is a bagger bro. That was bagger. totally a bagger bro oh, bagger. For sure. All bagger those speakers bro would, would spend a good chunk of money on that. Yeah. It's a CVO without the actual one thing you want out of the CVO, which is the big motor. Yeah. The yeah. power. <laughs> Ugh. All right. Well. <laughs> All right. Let's go to Justin. All right. So my pick for second worst shit turd. <laughs> Speaking of the bikes that are literally just fucking a couple things bolted on, it's going to be the Cannon out of Old Fort Harley Davidson with U of Arkansas Fort Smith Automotive Program. So this bike is a low rider in the race category. These guys got so lazy that that tank is a stock tank. That's oh, yeah. the stock paint job, and then they just added some shit to the back. And if you look really closely, the reds don't match. Ooh. Oh, they do not. <laughs> wow. How are you going to fuck that up? When you, you got the color codes. Bro, the reds don't match. So outside of that, they put big-ass ugly bars on it. They put some really ugly wheels on it. And a seat. <laughs> I mean, that's... <laughs> to me, that looks about. I mean, of course, there's it little some, pieces here and yeah. there, and why does the lost, but why does the 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 dash? The, it the doesn't console, look like it fits right. It mm-hmm. looks like it's too fucking big. Yeah, I don't think I don't have enough experience with the low riders to know if that's the stock one or if that is one of the ones off of the low rider S Dyna. It's like half the height of the tank. Almost, yeah, it's it huge. Looks like yeah. it's fucking gigantic. It doesn't look right at all. No. And then the uh, the mixture of chrome and black just does not work for me at all. Like no, having the black with the the chrome forks and then black bars, it's just like. And then the chrome, the fucking chrome stainless dash. steel wires or cables. It's like, yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, just overall garbage. Hmm. <laughs> all right, <laughs> try harder. <laughs> It's fun to be the person talking shit for once because usually I'm on the receiving end of yeah, all this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which, like I said, most of these bikes in the bottom are shit that I build. So yeah. let's, let's just keep that out <laughs> there. there. You go. All right, Justin, let's go ahead and have you continue us into the, the worst. You know when you just open up random shit from your wife? Wow. That's in your yard. My yard? Yeah, that's your yard. Oh, boy. It's your yard, bro. All right, so... <laughs> Completely off topic here. <laughs> Completely off topic. My number one piece of shit is the Colonel Mustard. This is a street bob from Twister City Harley Davidson, which, granted, is a great dealership. I've been there. With Heights High School Industrial Arts Program. Basic, 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 basic. It's, yeah. They put on a different graphic on the tank, swapped out the wheels for spokes. No, wait. The street bob comes with spokes, doesn't it? I think so. And so it's exhaust, a stupid fucking Springer seat, and bars. Wait, is it is that f- rear fender supposed to be that high off the tire? I think they they're just going, raised it. They're going Dynabro. Yeah, I think they just raised it. Try to Dynabro it, thirteen inch. That looks stupid. Yeah, it does not. Once again, the profile of how that bike's sitting is not working. No, no, not at all. And it's fucking yellow. And fuck yellow. 
<laughs> I will say one cool thing they did was they put their logo on the air cleaner. On the air intake, yeah. yeah. Other than that, garbage. Well done on the air intake. Good job. Yep. <laughs> okay. Try and I like time. I like the exhaust. The exhaust is cool. All right. Uncle Ken. All right, so I picked Road Race by West Bend Harley-Davidson with Milwaukee Lutheran High School. <laughs> and this what? abomination. You didn't like this? No, fuck no, this what abomination. What the fuck is that? It's a roadster it's in the race category. It's I think it's dope as fuck. Yellow piece of shit, and it looks like they crashed two different motorcycles, put them all in a pile, and then tried to piece them back together. It's got like a fucking CBR front end or some shit. On a Harley Davidson. That looks like a something Buell would have done. I think it was dope. Yeah, like 30 years ago. It's almost there. I will agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get that they, you know, they're going for the, the the race thing. Maybe if I saw that on like the salt flats and you were trying to set like a, a, a land speed record for building a shitty bike and making it go fast. But and then the fucking the yellow paint it just looks terrible all around and it looks really it looks like a stock bike that they put a freaking I don't know some sort of you know crotch rocket front fairing on and that's it. So that tail end is a bolt on. That's a Saddleman uh, bolt on seat. They convert it to chain drive with a big ass rear sprocket. So that thing probably pops a wheel. He's like it's nothing. Exhaust is looks like a basic tracker exhaust and then it's just uh, it's good uh they did dual discs up front so that's that's different and then none of that drive firing. yeah, yeah it just i just there's nothing good looking I, about it it's fugly as shit to me i can appreciate the concept just not the execution no yeah. i mean they, they they put in work i give them, oh yeah i give them credit yeah but and it, rear sets it's just fugly <laughs> Like I hope it, it better just be fast as shit. I bet you. I won't think it's fast. I guarantee it's torquey as fuck. With that <laughs> big of a with that big of a uh, sprocket in the back, I guarantee that thing pops wheelies like nobody's business. So my loser <laughs> of the group, uh, back, the Bagger Bro Special, the, the Bagger Bro Special is the Cashmere, and and again we're now you know we didn't see each other's picks here, so. It looks like they threw some paint and speakers on the bike and called it a day. Not on par with any of the other baggers no. in the mix. And e- it, even Justin's pick, the, the 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 America one. Yeah. It just And here's what's funny. All my favorite bikes were bikes that I typically would never ride. Yeah. And the ones I hated were baggers. The, you That's can funny. On, you yeah. can only do baggers a certain way without completely fucking them up. Yep. Um, so let's, let's go from the, the bad, you know, this is what we call a shit sandwich. Yeah. Start with really, really good. Give them the bad news and then you end with something really good. Agreed. So let's go into the international honorable mentions. Uh, after we hear from our, another sponsor, Man, you need to put me in charge of these transitions. Yeah, I'm, I'm horrible at transitions. You're so bad. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, we're going to ha- have a, another ad break from Brush Hero, our, another new sponsor. If you prefer washing your own bike and car, Brush Hero is the ultimate DIY detailing tool for you. 100% water powered, all you have to do is hook it up to your garden hose and go to town on your dirty ride. With the various interchangeable brush heads, you will be able to take care of those hard to reach spots around the engine your rims, and anywhere else Road Gribe can get stuck to. So if you are a DIY detailer, pick up a Brush Hero today. And if you use the coupon code WHEELS, you will get 10% off your order. All right, so favorite bikes from outside of the United States. That is what international means, folks. Justin, let's hear from you. All right, so I I wasn't planning on picking two, to be honest. Um but then, of course, I found the second one, and it was fucking, of course, I'm going to pick it. So my first one is called the Rough Cut. This is out of Ishikawa, Ishikawa, Japan. Uh, it's a fat bob in the race category. And to kind of explain it, it is a cafe racer fat bob, but in a very futuristic 
format. Like if you told me Cafe Racer Fat Bob, I'm like, that's gonna look like shit. No, it looks this really looks good. fucking awesome. So I like what they do with the headlight too. I love what they did the headlight, the wheels. This is something that is becoming really popular. That's actually kind of like tire paint. Uh, it's something that uh, actually Moto Noob's dealer is making pretty popular. They shave all the lettering off of the tire and actually paint it so it's all nice hmm. and smooth. Uh, it's just really cool. Uh, different tank. Um, <laughs> no rear fender at all. No rear fender at all. Just a or front looks, fender. Looks, yeah, yeah no, front fender. no fenders. Looks just like a custom fabbed um, seat. The, that tank is completely different. Uh, just a really fucking cool bike. They put clip-ons on a fat bob, which yep. is just nuts. Super cool, super good looking bike. There, there you go. All right. Let's hear from you, Ken. All right. So, well, because everybody else had picked two, <laughs> I went with two as well. But the first one I went with was Signature Harley Davidson Ode Monic Motors. However, the hell you say that. All right. Out of the Netherlands. Yeah. The paint just. Kind of everything they got clip-ons on it. The paint job is phenomenal. It looks low and fast. Mm-hmm. It just looks so slick. What's up? This paint job, this paint scheme, was my number two pick for my Fat Bob build. Oh, it looks, I was going to do a, a golf I love, style. I love what they did with the gauge. That's dope. Just it looks like it'll haul ass, and it doesn't look like it's uncomfortable. I mean, it's still got it's still got forwards on it. That's a sport glide. Wow. Okay. And yeah, it's yeah. I forgot to say, yeah, it's a sport glide. That looks honestly, that looks a lot like like a like a sportster, honestly, but better. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> way better. I mean, just I don't know. Everything just kind of stood out to me. Yeah. Yeah. Thumbs up for that one for sure. So my first one for international honorable mentions is the sonic bobber and it's a fat bob out of japan and this thing just it screams awesome it's a higashi kurumi Bless I'm, you. I'm, I'm, I'm probably butchering that so any of our one or two japanese listeners i apologize but what do you like about this bike i just think it looks unique as shit i like that the seat pan that that's, they did there. That's, that's all they cool. changed. That and the bars. That Did they change the bars? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just, for me, it stood out. I like the way that that bike looks. I mean, to each of their own. But. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> I mean, really, it looks just like they changed the, the seat pan. Took, Even the took, exhaust took is the, the same. Off. I mean, it's powder coated, but it's the stock exhaust. Yeah. It just, I liked it for me. It was aesthetically pleasing. I like how it has a little smiley face. <laughs> a lot of them. Oh, okay. oh yeah. <laughs> it's important. Yep. So there's my first one. Okay, Justin, what is your... Uh, oh, God, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, favorite international bike number two. This is the Space Age by Harley-Davidson Bologna. This was a heritage classic. Wow. In the race category. Wow. And if you would have told me this bike was heritage when it started, no I would have told you you were nope. full of shit. But if you look at it, like that's literally like the race theme heritage version of what I'm building my Fat Bob up to be. That looks so slick. It is so cool looking. Also, I don't know if it's in that picture or if it's in the pictures down below, but all that cus- all that seat has like custom lighting built into it, and the tank lights up too. Dope. The whole tank panel lights up. Keep going down. That, that could be distracting. Right there. The whole tank lights up. That's dope as fuck, So that's fuck, a split dude. tank then. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. got to be. Yeah. yeah. So, of course, it's it's all NASA-themed. Oh. It literally looks like it's burnt up from re-entry. I mean, it's, it's very similar to... Oh, I missed that the first time. The the burnt front end. Yep. Oh, hell yes. The front fender and the front of the tank have that burnt uh, heat tile look, which is exactly what I'm going to be doing on my fat bottom. So, you know, I will say that this looks like a bike you would want. Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> they they did this so we would talk about it on our podcast. That probably yeah, yeah. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to talk about this because I did my, my video releasing that render today and I forgot to talk about this because I did want to say like, I do know this bike exists. Please don't send me it 50,000 fucking times. <laughs> well, not, now they have to send yeah. it to you. Yeah. 
All right, Ken, you're number two for international mentions. All right, so my number two was the titled FXDR, and it's an FXDR 114 made by Harley Davidson Mellowman, France. And it just... You gave me a bad link here. Did I give you a bad link? Open for me. Wait, no, it didn't. Oh, it did the first time. Bitch. I was on the page. <laughs> what the hell? Ken... Here we go. I'll freaking pull this up. <laughs> hey, we, we are, are experts. Yeah, experts. We, we never claim to be great at those guys. For some reason, it's just not coming over. I'm surprised you didn't like this one more. Eh, it was all right. The RAR. That's the one that Blockhead got sent like a billion fucking times when he first got his. He even had to make a post about it like, yes, guys, I know this bike exists. <laughs> Man, you gotta find it now. That's funny because when I clicked it the first time, it took. It's me no down. longer up. You yeah. think it got taken down? Well, because I put in that link and it kicks me back to the homepage. Hmm. Do you remember where it was from? Uh, it is, yeah. Harley Davidson Maloon, France. Yeah, I got it right here. Francais. Francais. Yeah, it's still there. Is it? Yeah. Just yeah. sort your filters to France. That's what I did. Yeah. So this bike. That one's really fucking cool. I don't... They took and they just... They took this FXDR 114 and completely changed it. The The way they did the exhaust is freaking killer. It was towards the bottom. Keep loading more. That blue storm's cool, right too. Okay, there we go. Does not look like no, it an does FXDR. Not. That front fairing is dope. That's a different right? front fairing. Now... Scroll over and actually look at the fairing, how they did it. Look at that. Oh, wow. So it's all one piece. Yes, that is awesome. Still got clip-ons. Yeah. All right, so they kept that. Uh, that's where they got those bars for that other, that fat bomb that you liked. They got it from that. So I was like, I know I've seen those bars before. But they changed the exhaust. The The way they did the exhaust is crazy. That swing arm is dope, too. Right? That fairing is all custom fab, too. So or the, the fender, I mean. They put some work into this one. I like the detail work. And yes. That they left. They didn't hide it. Is the FXDR single swing arm? No. it's That one yeah, is. The the FX the new FXDR, yes. It is a single is side. Is it? Single side swing arm, left side. Huh. I guess I just never noticed that. I didn't either. Yeah. Huh. Well, <laughs> there you go. Okay, yep. cool. I, I think it's a good looking bike. Yeah, it's not over the top gaudy. It's, you know, I mean, that looks like a. Cu okay, so on the FXDR, do they have a digital gauge like this? Uh, they have a kind of a plain digital gauge. FXDR is not single swing arm. No. Oh, you're right. It's not. I thought it was. So even more fucking kudos to them because I, I think that's what really changes the look of that bike. Yeah. That and the I air was, box. I was thinking of the. Uh, <laughs> that's what the Diavel is. Yeah, and I was thinking because that's really kind of what it looks yeah. like, and also the way the fender is done. Yeah, yeah. I think it looks good. I think it looks great. But yeah, they they put in work on that bike. All that that tubing in the exhaust is crazy too. I know. <laughs> All right, so my pick for my second or whatever. Th these aren't in. They're not in any order. No. no. And, of course, my link's not working either. It's probably, probably the license. site. <laughs> uh, this oh, okay. The Phoenix out of uh, Switzerland. The Phoenix? Solothurn. And I now have to pull it up. Switzerland. Luckily, there's only 10 bikes on here, so... <laughs> Um, but yeah, the Phoenix, this thing looks really, and, and here's the thing. I love the fact that they took the time to paint the frame. Yeah. That's a big fucking process. Damn. But yeah. I, that's pretty dope looking. Now this would only be a bar hopper for someone my size. Mm -hmm. Cause you are stretched out. You are, yeah, you it's are. like you're folded in half. Yeah. But I just, I love the paint work. I love the color schemes they went with. It's just enough wild to be cool looking and not over the top. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I would have never picked these bikes that you picked. 
like for you like if you would have lined these up in a lineup i would have never picked these for you that's a pretty loud back especially when you scroll down to the bottom the third picture i don't know where there you go that one right there on the right look how fucking loud that is that looks like a a 90s tattoo sleeve yes yeah that's exactly what god damn it little blonde jesus christ (laughs) what (laughs) yeah yeah yeah, that's fucking cool i don't need that yeah I, I like the, I like it. <laughs> How many Ed Hardy shirts do you own? None. Or did you own none? Never. Oh, too much. Uh-huh. Co- too much color. Tracy yeah. has some Ed Hardy shirts. She's a girl. That's acceptable. Yeah. All right. So let's move into our closing argument. When looking at a cruiser, what is the first thing you notice? So mods, paint, etc. Uh. So when I say cruiser, I mean non-sport bike. Anything else that's not a sport bike. So it can be a rogue glide if, if you need it to be i think i i look at it and i think the first thing i notice is what bike it is yeah <laughs> I, I just i guess the first thing i would notice would be probably well i mean i can't even see the paint because yeah fuck i don't know i think the first thing i look for is what's done to it mm-hmm. i think that's i mean just me being a you know dyna bro a dyna bro yeah I, I like to look to see, okay, what on this bike is different? Mm-hmm. What did this not come with from the factory? Okay. Mods. Mods are going to be my answer. Yeah, I, w- I would probably have to go with, because paint is paint. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can change it. You can leave it. But, yeah, I, I guess I would have to agree with, with Bird. It would probably be the mods that it has, whether it comes like that from the factory or whether they're aftermarket put on by the dealership or whatever. Yeah, probably mods. Okay. And usually the first things I look at when it comes to mods is bars and seat. Bars and seat. Yeah. I I don't know. I, I look for, again, what has been customized. and Because you, you're know, a diner bro? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm a bagger boy, right? Bagger boy. Bagger boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no. So if you look at a lot of the bikes I chose, a lot of them are painted frames now the only harleys that come from the factory with a painted frame are the screaming eagles all of them and well okay <laughs> color off. matched fuck off uh, no yours is not <laughs> color matched <laughs> i mean but but it is you know black black on black crime <laughs> anyways <laughs> wow <laughs> well we're not doing a, that a took psychological a <laughs> experiment what's the first thing that comes to your mind <laughs> no so I just I like seeing people who've taken the time, like even at the Chopper show, people who had the custom painted frames. I love that. Yeah. Um, and then I kind of look at who's the person riding it. Are they a complete douchebag? Yes. Or <laughs> if they're on a Harley, <laughs> do yeah. they fit the stereotype? Yeah. Which stereotype are they going to fit into? But no, I'm. I, what is unique? I mean, everyone has this type of windshield or that type of exhaust what's unique about this oh yeah that's that's what i'm looking at especially if you can look at it and and know like right off the bat that those are custom mods like Mm -hmm. you fabricated those bars you fabricated that exhaust yeah yeah or you paid someone to do it well i mean yeah still yeah at the end of the day i can't weld for shit uh, yeah i mean (laughs) i can weld but i definitely can't like tig weld or nothing like that fuck that shit Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels Podcast. To see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. On behalf of Justin, Uncle Ken, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you're a jerk. Then be someone better. Peace. I, I, I